I've only watched five 2024 movies this year, and this is one of them. And with the star-studded cast of Reacher, Henry Cavill, and the star of I Am Number 4, well, these are all good signs for the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. I found it very interesting when it said it was based on a true story, because it, from the trailer, seemed very untrue, or what I might mean by that is overblown. And the movie did not disappoint in that sales pitch, because it is quite over the top, and which is also another movie I like a lot, but my, my point is, the movie, it, it, it remains hard to believe even after viewing. But after the ad read and after the open rolls, I'll break it down. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Whether it's your first time here or you're a regular here at Mr. Super Raz, I just want to thank you for tuning in to the channel. It exists because I, Oz, from the channel Mr. Super Oz, I wrote a 68-page graphic novel called Everlasting Survivors. Volume 1 is called All Day Long. If you follow the link in the description of this video, you can get yourself hats, shirts, posters, all kinds of fun things. But most importantly, you can get the story itself. And the more people that pick up the story, the greater the chances are that there can be continued adventures with these heroes. If you could, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment, enjoy. With this being a current critique, obviously, The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare came out in 2024. It ran for one hour and 50 minutes. I had already stated that this was based on a true story, which I find interesting. But extra nifty, this story is from Winston Churchill's Confidential Files Declassified in 2016. We begin in Nazi-controlled waters. Hey, Henry. Oh, and Alan, nice to meet you, pals. <laughs> Man, Alan Richardson just feels like the top guy. Ever since watching Reacher, he just feels like the star of all stars. I mean, obviously, Henry Cavill is a big deal as well, given his casting as Superman. As much as I thought it was a letdown, it still means something to be cast as Superman. I find it so funny that Henry and Alan both laugh while guns are being pointed at them by Nazis. What a great title sequence that this thing had. We jumped 25 days earlier when Wesley from The Princess Bride is... He's, he's watching a war reel about Hitler taking over. And, of course, Wesley says the most logical and understandable thing, which is Hitler is not playing by the rules. So we can't either. And he wants to put or give Henry Cavill the ability to put a team together as to be able to run a mission and take out Nazi U-boats. Cavill is taking everything he wants, cigars, liquor, lighters, whatever. Henry is just laid back and cool and he knows who exactly he wants on his team and I just think it's so cool <laughs> he's like I must get one of those coats very Mar from Sin City it is it's one thing to to take over the world but to, to take over the kitchen that was a funny line that they had when a, a woman is dissatisfied with the Nazi cuisine that she and her friend are having the style feels less like a war movie and more like a heist film with the 
quick paced cutting and and reflecting over oh if we do this then that'll happen and it's just it's just nuts that Churchill's people wanted to surrender I mean the people around him but I guess I shouldn't be surprised because people quit and that just shouldn't be something that surprises me and it should just come naturally to understand people not wanting to follow through Henry Cavill steals a Nazi's hat and coat and is waving at Nazis before he starts having him, he and his team start just killing them, which is rather entertaining and a smart way to blend in while taking out the bad guys. The only thing worse than a Nazi is him, which is, again, more intense, great writing, and what a sales pitch for your top bad guy, the, the concept that... He's worse than the worst of the worst. This real big bad prides himself on maintaining harmony and will be a brutal killer and ruthless about it to keep his quote-unquote harmony. I did not realize that the Nazis had control of so much of Africa in World War II. This movie is surprisingly informative, and I hope that it is mostly true because that's one thing about action movies based on reality as it seems like or heck maybe not even action necessarily but movies based on reality is that they can take liberties the dude who is quote-unquote worse than a nazi believes that he is very smooth yet it feels like the woman he's hitting on thinks he's quite creepy with only two days until the heroes should arrive they have they've been stopped by the brits but they get free since a German U-boat is detected, and so that's one of those things that feels like, oh, is this made up, or is this real life, or based on real life? Henry Cavill is so good at his facial expressions, especially anger, but overall, Cavill is just a very good leader, which is interesting because he was never given the, the chance to lead the Justice League like, in my mind, Superman should. If I have it my way, nary a shot will be fired. How often do things go your way? Eh, it depends on who you ask. Whoever was the writer of this this film just knows how to hit those good one-liners. The, the woman who was creeped out by the big bad is going to a costume party with him, and she brings him a Caesar, a Julius Caesar costume, and she dresses as Cleopatra. This, this mission is not quite impossible, but it does seem quite daunting because Cleopatra finds out that the U-boats have been reinforced and are going to be unable to be sunk. And so the team realize, well, if we can't take out the Nazis' fleet, why don't we just steal them? It's, uh, it's just so fun. And it's, it's almost just a little greedy, which is funny. While the boys are trying to steal the U-boats, Cleopatra has a costume change and does a musical number, but even though this is supposed to distract Caesar, what it actually does is reveals to him that she's not on his side when she slips up and says a word incorrectly, and he now knows that she is Jewish, which means that he's bound to figure out this whole thing was a trap. It just hit me that... Reacher feels like the most proficient archer ever within the context of this film. He is able to shoot multiple people with the same arrow, pull it out, and then take out more people, which is great because he is very stealthy in that way, but once he gets detected, he finds an axe and just starts taking him out like he's a lumberjack, which is also quite funny. The big bad, or Caesar as I've been dubbing him, is taking Cleopatra to be tortured, but the heroes explosion goes off early which is what big fun drama and what a, a powerful conclusion we are leading toward caesar is shook and turning on his own allies he must know that cleopatra is behind this he he for sure blames her cleopatra is smart enough she she kills caesar and henry a cavill his name is gus is Man, I really enjoy his, his leadership for this team. Four weeks after the big mission, Churchill brings the team 
a feast to celebrate the job well done. He said the movie title to them in talking about them, how that they are his personal ministry of ungentlemanly warfare, which I thought made for a really good finish. And speaking of good, I give this the, the good rating of four out of five. It, uh, it was fun. And that's really what you should want out of a big time blockbuster action-y adventure. And I'm, I'm glad that I partook. I'm glad that I enjoyed it. And as I said before the review and before the ad read and before the open roll, I've watched five 2024 movies. Well, in two weeks' time, so not next Monday, but the following, we, I will talk about the fifth 2024 movie I've seen, and that is The Fall Guy. Enjoy. Enjoy.